Right, good morning grade 10. So today's exercise we're looking at page 10 4. It's not very difficult to do. I suspect it won't take much longer than 10 minutes to do it. It's basically we're going to be looking at a cross section of a foundation of a house. So this would effectively be like a front view but it's cut through. We can actually see under and above the ground as well. So going to the instructions we have to draw the complete foundation to a scale of 1 to 10 that means every dimension that we see we have to divide by 10 okay so 700 becomes 70 and so on and we have to add all the dimensions that they give on the diagram and also some labels that are missing from there I'm also going to talk about okay now one thing they don't actually mention here on the diagram is uh, hatching but I'll get to that as well okay so just going through this here here we can see the foundation strip and on top of that we have our outside wall okay which has a thickness of 220 okay the height doesn't matter we just stop somewhere and then this area here between the concrete and the NGL or the natural ground line this is what we refer to as the compact hardcore filling okay and then underneath here, there's the NGL. Underneath the NGL here, we have undisturbed earth on each side. Okay. So I'm just going to follow each measurement. So the 220 divided by 10 is 22. Okay. The 500 divided by 10 is 50 and so on. Um, and then I want to go to the 700 here for the width of the foundation strip. Remember, this is running all along. Okay. All along the length you can't see the length of the strip but it's running all along the wall as it runs on the building okay so i'm going to also pause there by the 700 because sometimes the 700 isn't given the height must be given okay so the height there is 250 but for the width i'm going to show you something as well so i'm kind of going to ignore the 700 today all right students so the first thing you want to do is you want to get down all the heights from your diagram. So for this I'm just going to draw construction lines across. Right, so next I'm going to be doing the foundation strip, but like I said before, uh, they give the foundation strip as 700 and the height is 250. Now I'm going to ignore the 700 and show you what to do if the foundation width is not given. So in that case what you're going to do is you're going to start by drawing a line here. Then you're going to go at 45 degrees and that will give you the first line of the wall. Okay, now I'm going to mark down the 22 for the thickness of the wall. Right now that we have the foundation strip, we can go up and we can draw the line upwards. But please keep in mind that this little area is where the concrete layer is going into, so don't draw that dark. Right, next we want to draw the concrete layer. It doesn't actually matter today how long it is, but it goes halfway into the wall. So for that one, you're just going to take the 22 divided by 2, of course, is 11. I'm just going to mark 11 millimeters. And then we can draw the concrete layer in. Okay, now we can actually go and add the NGL. Right, so our foundation is basically done. Uh, now we have to add the runouts here for the wall just to show that it's actually carrying on. So for that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line in the middle. The same, let's say, on this side. Okay. Then I draw a line on each side, but close to that vertical. And the same here. And then you can just connect the zigzag to each point. All 
Right, so there's our run outs. So now the second last thing that we have to add is our dimensions. Now please keep in mind all the black lines here are dark lines, okay? The red was our construction lines, it should be incredibly light. Okay, I'm only doing it this dark so you can actually see it on the board. And then our B lines, the green that I'm going to use, is in between dark and light. So the dimensions shouldn't be as dark as the drawing, but it shouldn't be as light as the construction. Right now, looking at your dimensions here, please take note that you have your arrow line and then you have your parameter lines. The parameter line of the dimension must not touch the drawing. There must be a bit of a gap there. Okay. And then in civil drawings, we don't use arrowheads. We actually use these little diagonals. Okay. On the points to indicate where the line starts and stops. Okay. The distance away, you can of course decide. And then you always write on the line or to the left of the line no matter which side it is okay you can't write below and you can't write here on the right side you have to write to the left uh, please also take note that your font size should be basically about three millimeters and also do not let your your writing be on the line itself there must be a tiny gap just to keep it nice and neat now I'm going to leave the remainder of the dimensions for you to do. As you know, there's uh, about eight that you have to add. They're all done in very similar fashion. So just keep these three elements in mind. Writing to the left on the line. Number two, the parameter line must not touch the drawing. Number three, the dimensions should be in between dark and light. Okay, so please add the other six as well. And then I'm going to show one more thing that you will not find necessarily in the book. So, and that is for the hatching. And I want you to add this today as well. So we're going to add two types or four types of hatching. Okay. But the first type must be done with a 45 degree set square. So if you take your 45 degree set square, what I normally do is I start, let's say, on a number here, let's say 12. So you can see here, the dimension here on my ruler is 12, okay? And then I'm going to move it to the next number, there's an 11. And I'm going to draw the first line. Now keep in mind, hatching is also in between dark and light. So I'm going to add this with the green pe pen again. And then I'm going to go half a centimeter. I just shift it half a centimeter to the side. And I draw the second line. Because in civil, the hatching always has to be done in pairs. You have two lines in a big gap and two lines in a big gap. So again, I started on 11, then I went to 10 and a half to the left. And now I can decide how big I want the gap to be. So I'm going to go one and a half centimeters. So that will be mean I go to nine and I draw the first line of the second set. And then I go half a centimeter again. And then I go one and a half and so on. Right, so there's our hatching is complete for the wall. So the wall has to be done with 45 degree hatching. Double lines only please. And then last but not least, the other hatching can be done freehand. So let's do the easier hatching first. So for example, here on the concrete foundation, okay, to indicate concrete, now you don't have to do the entire area. I start by adding triangles on the concrete. Maybe more in the corner, and as I go to the side, maybe I have less and less. Now normally in the exam, the foundation wouldn't be this big, and it would actually go a lot quicker. And then you can just add, let's say, a few dots in between, And again, please do this freehand, okay? Uh, this hatching is better to do it in freehand, and it's also quicker in the exam. And obviously we have concrete here as well, so again, just start with a few triangles, just add a whole bunch of triangles going from left to right. Again, I'm not going to do the entire area, and then I'm just going to add a few dots in between. 
okay and there's our concrete next we want to indicate the compact hardcore filling which is in fact sitting here okay so between the ngl and the concrete and that has to be done at 45 now it's not wrong if you use a 45 degree instrument okay but i always tell students you know just go at 45 roughly go at 45 degrees and then just go the other way and if you run out of space that's fine so obviously i'm not going to continue because we don't have any more foundation here and then underneath between this strip and the ngl we should have our undisturbed earth now that's done in very similar fashion but it has to be on both sides of the foundation strip so what i'm going to do is again i go at 45 degrees freehand again you can do this with the instrument if you don't feel comfortable doing it freehand the same on that side so i just go 45 degrees okay so you just indicate the area that they want and then let's say I go to this line, roughly a third of each distance. So I go roughly one third of that line and one third again. And I draw two parallel lines and I stop. Okay. And then I do the same here. Parallel with the previous ones. I go parallel this way. And then there I ran out of space. And of course I also am going to need the parallel lines that are going to sit here okay and then you rinse and repeat on this side so we would actually have one roughly here okay and then i take a third of that distance and a third of that distance and i stop on the line okay and we actually ran out of space so please try and do that freehand as well as neat as you can you can do it with instruments but i want you to practice the freehand so the compact filling the hatching is just 45 degrees nice and big then you do the same for the undisturbed earth and then about each third of the line you just go parallel two lines parallel with this one parallel two with that one and so on okay and that's the undisturbed earth compact layer concrete layer going halfway into the wall the wall that's 220 and the foundation and please keep in mind the reason why i made mine 720 is because by doing the 45 degree construction the length on each side of the wall is 250 and then 500 together plus the 220 for the wall and that of course gave me 720 and not 700 okay so if you use the construction method you should have the same dimension okay and that's it guys have a great day